Wrong life. Hi guys. Um, coming at you a little bit differently today. I thought we would try something new. Side note, if you like this style of video, please let me know. Leave a comment below or a question that you may have and I'll try to cover it in an upcoming video. So I thought for this year to start off and, and to take our relationship to the next level, which I want to do, I want to communicate more with you and you with me. I thought it'd be a good idea to tell my story and give you guys a little bit of background of what got me to this point and who I am really. So this is a little video I like to call my story. So let's just jump into it. I am from a very, very small town in upstate New York, Hilton, New York to be exact. Actually, let me show you, take a look at this. This is my hometown. We just got that second street light. We're pretty excited about it. This is my high school. This is where I had my first job. I was an apple picker. Then I made apple cider, then I made apple donuts, and apple fritters, apple pie, everything apple. It's a great job actually. Taught me a lot about work ethic. This is where I first tongue kissed a girl. This is the house I grew up in. And this is my beautiful mother. Hi YouTube. That's where I grew up. And throughout those years from, from two to 18, my entire life was focused around basketball. This is what I love to do. This was my passion. And that continued up until college where I went to a small state school called SUNY Fredonia to play basketball. I had no idea what I wanted to be when I went to college. I took liberal arts classes, I played basketball, and I partied. And I partied a lot. And that caught up to me quickly. As there is a three strike policy at the college that I went to, I was about a half a strike away from getting expelled. Nothing, nothing bad, I was just really enjoying college life. So I went home that semester barely squeaking by and I decided something has to change. I have to, I have to develop and grow and do something more with my life than just play basketball as I was realizing it wasn't taking me to the NBA or making the riches that I had once dreamed of. So be it. Side note, basketball has actually been a great way for me to meet people abroad. Even places where I don't speak the language, we still can interact and play basketball, and it's a great way to immerse myself in a foreign place. Game is over. Good game. Mm -hmm. Respect. So that summer, I reevaluated my entire life. I decided to stop playing basketball, at least for the team, and start focusing on the academics and a career that was gonna take me to the next level. So I came back to school my sophomore year with a new attitude. I got a new advisor who was very adamant about me taking the most difficult classes. I double majored in finance and economics. I got really involved in the stock market and I met a group of guys who were starting a business on campus. So this brings in chapter two. This was the time of the book business. So nice books, right? So as I was in school, I started getting more acquainted with these guys and they were buying back books from college students out of their dorm rooms and selling them online. And they also were opening up a new bookstore off campus to compete with the high prices of college textbooks. I thought this was a great idea and I was from a small school where there wasn't really much going on and means of entrepreneurship, so I wanted to be involved. So every day I would go after school or after my classes and go to the shop and get acquainted with these guys and do more marketing efforts for them, promoting on campus, buying back books, everything I could to be aligned with, with this group of guys who were really going places. And then amidst all of this academic revelation and business development and self-growth, I decided it was time to study abroad. So my junior year, I had my first taste of international travel and that was a study abroad program in London, England where I got to travel around Europe and really get a feel for foreign cultures. Side note, so when I studied in London I didn't have very many local friends and British friends or any other places that I went to. I stuck within that study abroad group and I said to myself if I ever have the opportunity to do this again I'm gonna go further. I'm gonna get out of my comfort zone and really learn about the cultures. 
That's what the whole spawn of Tourist to Townie came from, is to get off the beaten path. And it was inspired by that study abroad time. But after six months abroad and traveling around a little bit of Western Europe, it was time to go home. I got back into the book business and focused on my degree. I ended up graduating with honors in finance and economics and started this path towards building this book business. We went from a dorm room idea and a small off-campus bookstore to 11 stores nationwide and the third largest textbook marketplace on the internet. Well, university students have something to smile about, cash. Uh, that makes me smile. A new bookstore on the block buys textbooks from students, beating or matching any other store's price. We sent Fox 13's Big Buddha out to Bucks for Books in Salt Lake to check it out. Yeah, tell me about this program. What do you guys got going on, and how are we involving the, the rivalry? Well, we just opened up two new stores, Bucks for Books did, one in Provo, uh, right down the street from uh, Burger Supreme and John the Juice, and then we also got one right here up the street from the Pie Pizzeria. And we got two schools battling it off so you could sell back the most books and a, a percentage of all the proceeds of all the books that we buy back go to help a uh, literacy program in the local areas. So we built all this up, we built up stores, we built up inventory, built up a huge customer base and then we moved all of our operations to San Diego, California to seek investors and also business development. But everything wasn't as perfect as it seems. We were working day and night for the past five years developing this business online and across different regions in the US and it took its toll. For me in particular, I started realizing that I needed more substance in my life. We were all working for this payday and we weren't passionate about what we were doing. We loved saving college students money on their books. That wasn't my life's work and, and I started to feel really lost. Luckily one day we all came together and we talked about this and we decided that we wanted to find a buyer for our company so that we can all move on to new projects. And at that moment, it was time for me to make the next big decision in my life. To go on down the path of a, a successful marketing career, nine to five, work for a paycheck and not really love what I was doing or change everything and go left. So sitting at a coffee shop, I'll always remember this moment, sitting at a coffee shop in San Diego, California, it was a beautiful day outside, there was girls walking by, I had an acai bowl, everything seemed perfect on the surface, but I was miserable inside. I wasn't happy with what I was doing and I knew it was time for a change. So I went online and I started searching on Monster and all the career builders and all that for a new job in San Diego. And it just wasn't, it didn't feel right. So I took a break and I looked on LonelyPlanet.com. And the headline of Lonely Planet that day, for whatever reason, was take your kids to Buenos Aires. And I thought, okay, Buenos Aires. I have always wanted to learn a foreign language. Despite being a terrible Spanish student in high school and in college. And I've always wanted to live in a foreign country for at least a year. And I thought, this is the perfect opportunity for me. I have a little bit of cash. I don't have any real obligations. This is my moment to go spend a little bit of time, a few months maybe, and travel and get to see a different place. And so within a week of looking at that article, without much research at all, I booked a one-way ticket to Buenos Aires, Argentina, and thought, we'll figure it out when we get there. And then came that first night in Argentina. I sat on my bed in my hostel and I thought to myself, what did I just do? I had no contacts. I had no knowledge of the language. I was alone in a foreign place and I was scared. I was really scared. All right, I uh, found my hostel. I got my bed. There's a lot of people sleeping in the same room. Um, I gotta do some exploring tomorrow. I don't know. I'm here and now I'm not really sure what to do. So. And the following weeks and months weren't easy either. I struggled with the language more so than I thought. People told me, oh, three or four months, you'll pick it up. And it wasn't, it wasn't easy for me. Day after day, I would, I would work at it and I wouldn't even go to any English speaking 
restaurants or hangouts because I knew I needed to be focused all the time. I even got a job bartending at a little microbrewery and found two incredible roommates that helped me so much along the journey and that really made me fall in love with travel was the people and the relationships that I was developing. So I spent a year in Argentina. I got an apartment, I got a local girlfriend who didn't speak English. The best way to learn a language is to date someone who doesn't speak yours. So after a year of living in Argentina, I was addicted to this life, Latin culture, this need for exploration and discovery, and I knew I wanted to do more. So I created a mission, a five-year plan. My goal for Argentina was to live there for one year and then find a new business and go home and go on with my life. Didn't really work out that way. So I created this five-year plan. And I thought about the places that I really wanted to visit and thought about different ideas of travel and I created a mission at each location. So the five years of travel include, let's see if the lighting is bad. Number one was Colombia. So my roommates in Argentina were actually Colombian and they told me you gotta go to Colombia. So my goal there was to learn how to salsa dance. Next up was Bolivia and I wanted to build libraries and become a part of an organization that was doing something good for the community. Next up, Guatemala. I was in Guatemala, uh, lived in a town called Solola, where I worked for an organization called Kiva, which is a microfinancing loan company that provides small business loans to up and coming businesses from technology stores in your local town to farmers on the outskirts of Guatemala. It was very interesting. Next up, I went to Peru to cook and learn how to cook like a Peruvian. That was delicious. Peru has some of the best food in all of Latin America. Really, really good time. And the last, which just like Argentina on the one year goal, Brazil was supposed to be the end of this. My ultimate dream was to get a job working at the World Cup and somehow, some way that dream came to fruition. And that was my five years and my five year plan of traveling with touristitowny.com. And then after Brazil, I was supposed to go home and start that business that I was supposed to start after Argentina. And I realized in this process I had created a business. And touristatowny.com was making good money, the videos were doing better, and these projects were starting to come in and I thought to myself, if I walk away now, that's stupid. Things are just starting to, to move forward. So after Brazil, I decided, as you see here, everything was focused on Latin America. I decided to take Tourist Towny out of Latin America and start exploring some other parts of the world. The goal was from here on out to create these travel stories that inspire you to, to get off the beaten path and to get to know foreign cultures because despite all the chaos in this world, it is a beautiful place to seek out substance and to seek out the things that make you happiest, I think that's the most important thing in the world. So I'll leave you with that. I don't mean to get too deep. I just wanted to tell you guys about my story and my life and hopefully it inspires you guys to take that trip, to get away from your comfort zone and do something that, that inspires you. So yeah, if you haven't subscribed, I'd love it if you subscribe to the channel. And if you are subscribed, press that little bell next to the subscribe button and that'll give you notifications when I launch new videos. I really appreciate it, you guys. Again, anything you want to talk about, hopefully this helps us get to the next level of our relationship through communication. It's always important. All right, you guys, I'll see you next week. Thanks for watching. Bye.